or have not chosen your colleges yet, but what are we looking at? Division two, division one, please, Kai and Alex, you have to tell us, where do we plan on going? <laughs> hello, look, we are included.com family. Hello, Facebook and Twitter family. It is a pleasure to see you all. Today, I have Kaya and Alex, two 17-year-olds on the Nova Venom AAU basketball team located in Centerville, Virginia. How are you all doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> good, good. Excellent. How are you all adapting in terms of keeping your handles on the ball and remaining safe? Um, so as far as um, the COVID-19 situation, um, there has been a lot of tournaments that are still going on. And um, AAU teams get to decide whether they want their team to go travel or not. Or not. And um, my coach, as bad as we wanted to, he wanted to stay on the safe side. Right. And, um, decide just not to travel anywhere you know we don't want um like if I were to get something I don't want it to spread it to my family or spread it to other people's families that could possibly um um really impact other people in a really bad way health wise right so just to stay on the safe side we just decided to have um local practices um we would all practice um on an outdoor gym just so just for airflow so we would all be outside um at first, when we first met up, um, we hadn't been quarantined together, so we right. made sure all of our practices were six feet apart. We all brought our own balls, and between every drill, we had hand sanitizer. So um, coach would give us hand sanitizer. We would um, sanitize the balls. Um, we didn't really pass to each other as much. We just kind of kept our own ball. We would work on ball handling drills. We'd do some shooting drills, and we'd get our own rebound. And then once we started to see each other like twice, twice three times a week, Right. Um, we're used to seeing each other more. So that's when we incorporated the balls and um, we were still spread out and uh, we still made sure to stay safe with the um, hand sanitizer. Right. But um, we've also done um, team bonding stuff, but we made sure to stay outside. Like we went to one of our teammates house and we had a bonfire and that was really fun. We could all be together, be outside. And um, our team has been doing very well. I mean, with the great team we have, we really wish we could play AAU tournaments. Right. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, but we're all together. We're all happy playing basketball. We're one big family, so that's all I can ask for, you know? It, no, definitely, especially when you talk about being safe. You all are taking the necessary yes. precautions. Life cannot stop, but you all are taking the disinfected whites, wiping down the balls. I've listened to uh, Brian Waters, his podcast, and, and your interview on there, and you all talked about how you all bring your own ball to practice, so you all are definitely remaining safe. Alex? How has the 2020 uh, transition when it comes to being socially distant affected you? What, what's been your take on it? Well, I think our coach did a very good job with just practice, like organizing practices, you know, putting like our team first. He's like a family first guy. That's like the biggest thing for our team. And, you know, he doesn't want it to spread infect other families, just like Kaya said. So at the beginning, it was more of like he split our teams into half. Yeah, just to also, you know, keep everybody away from each other as well. Just see a couple people, Max, and, you know, sanitize the balls. You know, everyone did more hand, hand dribbling stuff, more, you know, work on yourself. And then we eventually progressed to more practices a week. And then, you know, finally everybody could, like, hang out together and practice together. And that's right. when it started, you know, be a lot more fun, finally be able to see people. Yeah. And then – um when we did the bonfire, that was just like the perfect thing just to set up our chemistry again because it yep. was so long for us to you know like each other. Any other, you know, it was, it's hard to connect with people when you haven't seen them in a while, especially during COVID. Mm -hmm. So I think it was just a good thing for all of us, you know, get a better connection and then build up our team chemistry. And yeah, it was tough, but we finally got back into it and got back into that rhythm. Definitely admirable. We talk about. Um taking care of yourself and also uh, also taking care of others, being responsible for others. And I think that you all are definitely doing that. And I see on your t-shirts, Venom Mentality. Yes. You yeah. must tell us, and you have to tell the viewers, what does that mean? Okay, so for Venom Mentality, <laughs> um, Venom Mentality, um, obviously inspired by Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. um, he was a very great player, one of the greatest players of all time. And the thing about Kobe Bryant is that he didn't only care about um, the NBA, he cared a lot about female yeah, sports, NBA. not yep. just WNBA, but female soccer, female softball, anything that's female related. He just cared so much and he paid so much attention to us. And it means a lot from that. And basically this is for him. 
you know, this is our way of saying like, this is for you. Um, everybody has learned a lot about Kobe. I think the big thing that everybody takes away about Kobe is his mindset. Right. Um, it's like no other. Um, he loves to win and works very hard. And that's where we're all inspired by this quote to Venom Mentality, just to have the same exact mindset as Kobe Bryant did. Um, well, for my thing, the big thing about it, him was his love for the game. It was just different. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that I've seen anybody else like that. There's nobody else that can compare to him. So I think for me, it's just work ethic. It's work. whether you want it or not. It's your love for the game. And that's how you win or lose. Yeah. That determines it. So I think that definitely is also key. And also just improving yourself, but also others around you. Right. If you're not playing 100%, you're not helping yourself or your teammates. Mm -hmm. Right. So just, you know, it's just a, it's worth ethic building yourself up and then also just like supporting being kind to your teammates offering that support because everybody's going to need it whether yeah. it's like you have high confidence or low confidence you need to be either constructive criticism or you know giving compliments mm -hmm. being right. there for each other yeah being there for each other is really important and when we talk about also being there for each other we also had a lot of social justice during 2020 um, in the midst of social distancing so how did your routine uh, respond to the social uh, justice that was going on in the country? Just, I feel like it's just very important to not only realize what's going on around you, but also be educated on the topic. Right. So for all these protests, like for social injustice, equality, Black Lives Matter, I think it's just the takeaway is just being equal. I mean, the thing is also relating back to Kobe was that he was very supportive of female athletes and female sports, which is not recognized enough. And you know, I mean, I think, although they are a little bit different, that it each is just like your skills. All skills are different, but it takes the amount, same amount of time, same amount of effort, same amount of work that you put in the same exact love for the game. Right. So I think that just following up with protests and, you know, they did a really good job, I think, and personally, during protests, you know, distancing, masks, everything. I mean, that's the best, honestly, possible way that you can show your support for the protests as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of us on the team, um, we'll post stuff on social media about it. Um, we'll repost yeah. it on our Instagram. Just, you know, showing awareness. awareness. Yes, yeah. awareness. Yeah, awareness is key, definitely, um, in our social age. If you post anything, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, any of the platforms you use, um, what you post, that's what people recognize you as. So if you all yes. yeah. that and say, hey, listen, we number one, we support the mask, you all being healthy, and we also support social justice, that was a really big step to take. So I usually play, well, I've grown up only just in the post. So as I was with Coach Squirewell, he taught me to become a guard too, because I knew when I would get older, I definitely would not get taller. I'd be the, you know, I'd be the same height, five, seven. That's not a post player. So okay. I definitely had to learn some guard skills. So I would say that I could be anywhere, but my main positions are small forward and shooting guard. Mainly shooting guard throughout my career. Just because, again, we're the same heights, so we're both not as tall as you know you think as close players would be. But the thing was is that Coach Squire did really well was teaching us both point guard and um, post moves, and just being able to because like for me in the post you have to be able to use your body if anything. That's like your that's your strong point. That's your key point that you're gonna need against like what over six feet yeah. tall post guards or post right. players. So just knowing that and you, you know being able to go in the post, it just it just switches up the whole game. That's just like a whole game changer. Yeah, so basically, Kaya and Alex, you all are versatile when it comes to the court. Yes, coach makes sure that everybody on the team is um, versatile. Got you. Ball handling yes. skills. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks like you all talk about posts. You know, you talk about guards. Yes. Yeah. If you have to take leadership positions and be the point guard, it looks like you all can do that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Coach is, he, he, can put, he just knows that he can put us, anybody on the team, like anywhere on the court. Okay. Like wherever he needs them. So I think that's what's great about our team is that everybody can play every position. Yeah, let's talk about yes. committing. You all have not chosen your colleges yet, but what are we looking at? Division two, division one, please. Kai and Alex, you have to tell us, where do we plan on going? <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, I'm open to all levels. I just don't want to like be restricted. I like to keep all my options open. Mm -hmm. So um, as of now, I'm not exactly sure. And I also don't have a preference on in-state or out-of-state. So I'm not exactly sure. 
to be honest, but I'm definitely open to all levels. And Alex, you told me that you also have another sport in the play when it comes to soccer for scholarships. So yes. what are you leaning towards, more basketball or more soccer? Um, I think just for me, I think it's more soccer wise, mm -hmm. but just because I, there was a recent point where I just did not like the game because high school, you know, everybody has some of those moments where it just, it just does not feel right. And then opening up to this team, they definitely got my love back for the game. Yeah. So I was just more soccer at that point. So as of right now, I won't been into as well as all levels. And I think hopefully can end by like, you know, December-ish. I right. feel like it's just, just a hard part to choose where you want to go because mm -hmm. that's your future. So it's like you just don't want to make the mistake of choosing one over the other mm -hmm. and then realizing that you didn't want to go there. Yeah, and yeah. just keeping options open as well. And I mean, I feel like it's just different for everybody for what everyone wants. Like whether you want a small school, big school, out of state, in mm -hmm. a state. It just and how do you plan on coming back, giving back, um, and really just being a part of the next generation? Um, so for me, um, it's not just because my dad's the coach. I would just come back anyway because I just love it so much. Right. But um, I would definitely love to help coach. Oh. I would say become an assistant um, alongside with my dad. I would love to help coach the wow. Uh, older groups. Wow. That's yes. amazing. What about you, Alex? Um, I would definitely come back just because, you know, with growing up and getting, you know, you're learning more, you're developing more. I feel like it's just a good thing to come back and just, you know, place your inputs and give them advice, especially to younger kids when they're going, going to be going through the same thing. I think it's really good to have like an older mentor that's already been through it. Right. To give you advice and everything. And it's yeah. just, it's just family. So like, he's like, like, this is my family. So I would always come back whenever needed or just surprising. It's Kaya and Alex. Thank you very much uh, for just allowing uh, lookwearyoncool.com to speak with you. Please tell us your social media handles and how people can follow you. Um, so basically my Instagram is just Kaya Squirewell. Um, same as Twitter, same as Snapchat. All my social medias are just Kaya Squirewell. Um, my social media, my Instagram is Lexi AG. And then, you know, my snap and stuff is on there. But if you want it, it's just Alexandra underscore AG. Yeah, and you can find Nova Venom on Instagram, yeah. Nova Venom 703. Um, you can go on Twitter, it's Nova Venom, and everything else is just.